Today I'm going to show you my six favourite tips for using the calendar in Outlook so that you can be more efficient and productive with scheduling your time and arranging meetings. Hello campers and welcome back to the channel where we're keeping IT simple because life is already complicated enough. So here's my calendar for Argo's kibble company, Argo's my dog, and he's got his own company creating dog food. Now here's my calendar for the next week, but you can see here if you look down in the bottom left hand corner of the calendar screen that I've got various different calendars here that I can view. And it's possible to view more than one calendar at a time. So I also have a second calendar here called Argo's Private Schedule. So if I check the box next to this calendar, you can see now that I have my own calendar and Argo's private schedule displayed side by side. Now this is great and it might be perfectly fine in some scenarios, but I can actually overlay these two calendars to view them as one. So if I come over to the view tab at the top of the screen, and you see here that I have a button called overlay. If I click that, you can see now that I have my calendar and Argo's private schedule displayed as one calendar. And I can have as many calendars as I like displayed in an overlay like this so that I can see them all together. The next tip that I want to show you is using the date selector. Now here you can see at the top of the screen on the ribbon I can choose between displaying a day, a work week, a full week or a month, etc. So using the date selector, I can select individual days. So for instance, let's say I want to see what's going on on the 17th or the 20th. I just click on the date that I want to view. I can also select a date range. So for instance, let's say I want to see what's going on between the 17th and the 21st. I just click and drag and then let go. And you can see those dates are now displayed on the screen. Or maybe I want a bigger date range from the 17th until the 30th. And you can now see that I can see exactly those dates on the screen. I can also click several individual days that aren't necessarily next to one another. Let's start with the 18th, but I want to set up a meeting on possibly the 18th, the 20th or the 27th. So I just click the 18th, then I'm going to click control on the keyboard and my mouse key for the 20th and then on my mouse key again for the 27th and now you can see just those three days appear on the screen and I can see what time maybe suits best for those particular dates. If I want to set up a new meeting I just click new meeting here and I can also instead of selecting a date here from the calendar or typing the date in I can use just natural language. So for instance, let's say I want to create a meeting next Tuesday. All I need to do here is type next Tuesday, press enter, and it will automatically select the date for me in two weeks. So it will set the date exactly in two weeks, three weeks on Thursday. And there we also get the date automatically calculated for us. And of course we can also use months. So let's put here, I don't know, in two months. And there you see the date calculated exactly from today in two months time. You can also put in there national holidays. So for instance, I could put Christmas and there we get Christmas day. For instance, I'm not gonna have a meeting on Christmas day, but uh, I think Argo would be very upset about that. So I just got a new email from Argo and he's suggesting to meet up for lunch on Tuesday. So instead of just replying to this and saying, yeah, let's do it, I can automatically reply with a meeting. All I need to do is click the meeting button in the ribbon here and it keeps all the details of the email and I can set the date here. So next Tuesday, I'm going to use my natural language and I'm going to set the time here, let's say going to have lunch at 12.30. I can set a location if I want. So let's go to the dog park and then I can send that to him. And this is quite useful for keeping all the information in an email thread and creating a meeting at the same time. So I can just send that to him. And of course, he can decide to accept it or reject it. 
So let's say I want to set up a meeting with Argo next week. Of course, I click here on new meeting and I'd like to meet Argo to discuss a new kibble flavor. So I'm going to type here kibble flavor meeting. I'm going to say I want Argo to attend and I'd like to understand when he's most likely to be able to attend this meeting. So if I click up here on the ribbon to scheduling assistance, you can see now that we have my free busy time and Argo's free busy time listed across a timeline here. Now I'm going to change the date to next week. So I think I'd like to maybe meet him on Monday. I'm a little bit busier on the 19th, but there are some potential options there. But the best date here looks like it's going to be the 18th. So let's go back to the 18th and I can block out some time here. So let's say I want to meet him at three o'clock. I can set the time here to three o'clock and I can see that I'm free, Argo's free. So that should work well. Now that I've set the time, I can send that meeting request to Argo. I don't have a location. I haven't decided yet. I'm just going to send it anyway. And there we go. And that's how the scheduling assistant works. Hoo Finally, if you're trying to arrange meetings with people in different time zones, there are a couple of ways that you can show different time zones when you're creating meetings and in your calendar. So the first way is to right click here on the calendar edge and you've got the option here to change time zone. And this brings you into Outlook options and here you can either change the time zone or you can add additional time zones. So for instance here you can see that I have my own time zone, I'm in Prague, but I want to add a second time zone. So I'm going to select here, let's say Mountain Time, US and Canada. So I can put there Mountain Time. And if I press OK, you can now see that we have the two time zones here listed side by side. And this makes it much easier to understand what I can do with certain people who are working at Argos Kibble Company, but in different time zones. When I'm creating a new meeting, I also have the option to display time zones. So you can see here I can add a different time zone. Maybe I can look here for let's choose. Bangkok. If somebody says they want to meet at 11 o'clock Bangkok time, I can set that meeting time straight away to be 11 o'clock in the right time zone. And that's it. Those are my six tips for using the Outlook calendar more efficiently. If you found the video useful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more tech tips like this. But before I go today, there are a couple of other videos on the screen that you might also find useful. But that's it from me today and I'll see you next time.